live on Periscope and we're live now on uh, on YouTube. Okay, so welcome to Friday night. A lot of things going on today. Uh, we had our big... First thing is if you're a journalist, thousands of people are calling us, so please yeah. just listen to this. We're not going to answer any phone calls or anything like that. You're going to have to come here uh, to get the information, okay? Mm -hmm. so. Just Straight. stop for a minute and get on this because this is where we're going to release the information to everybody at once simultaneously, okay? And this is what tired looks like when you spend all day breaking news. But you'll get you'll get used to it. You'll get used to it. I build up my stamina. You'll get used to it. I think there's so much, you know, uh, it's one of those things where the first couple of days you do this, it just, you know, hey. It's intense. Yeah, but so so for those who don't know the story, you mind if I do the preamble? Please do. Trish uh, is working with uh, a guy by the name of Rabbit, and he's not Rabbit Hole, he's Rabbit the Mole, so we just call him Rabbit Mole, Rabbit Mole. And he's a person who worked closely with the DNC. Again, none of these people have a political agenda, and you can watch earlier um, things. And uh, so, so there's a little bit of confusion with the files. There's... Uh, a 2.2 gigabyte uh, file that was a zip file of about 1.2 1.11 on the Mac and a little less on Windows. <coughs> okay, and Kim.com just tweeted out and he put up the 550 megabyte file. So we're still trying to see if Kim's file is different than our file because we have a lot more data. He had a Z7 extension which is a more advanced compression format about 70% but okay, but the way to tell Rabbit Rabbit Mole Rabbit Mole mm -hmm. when he gave the drive to Trish, mm -hmm. something he didn't say last night was the key presentation and the key folders, the the juice. This is going to be great, so nobody on the internet actually has this. Can you just con confirm that 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 what was the folder called? that contained what they thought was the juice. It's the stuff for Mike, and it's S-T-U-F-F-F-O-R-M-I-K-E. And it has a bunch of uh, PowerPoint presentations in there that basically uh, detail how to rig an election. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. You don't I need mean, to go past really that. So everybody, if you did the Kim.com mega Upload, download. If you go went to Mega Upload, and you, you got to get the link from Defango. Yeah, for the De Mega, for yeah, the Mega Download. And the critical litmus test for you to know that you got the right file is called um, Stuff, Stuff, Mike. Stuff or Mike. Mike. Now we don't know who Mike is, so anybody who wants to start speculating on who Mike is, go ahead. Defango gave it to me. Okay, and subscribe to Defango on YouTube. Now Defango is defanging. The DNC. Oh yes. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, Jason, right now had a conversation with uh, two conversations with Defango, and he's a, what Jason characterizes as a white hat hacker. He wants, he just wants to see the right thing done, and he is, he's uploaded two, one kind of a phone discussion, and then the next one is actually a more technical discussion. He actually says, a job wakes up, like I was saying with the backup thing, with a, a cron job. They used to call it. You know, that would be Kron's way of starting a job at a, at a time when the systems administrators left. But anyway, there's actually in this file, we saw the file, and on these files that you'll see uploaded, is a step by step how to create different server processes and how to do this, all this stuff. So you'll see that very, if you want the technical. And then there's a more high level uh, uh, description that is also was the first phone call. So first phone call is basic info on for you know mere mortals like Jason and I, and then if you're more of the technical person, we have a lot of people doing both. That that's going to be with Defango's second upload. And those Defango calls are uploading right now. They'll be there definitely during this live stream. So we'll let you know, or you should you should let us know when they go up. But but the key is these files have existed for a year. These are probably, I mean, we have all these people coming in now and saying this is this this is the deal. Yeah. So basically how to hack an election. And I'll explain how that happens. But 
here is why we do think this was the file that Seth Rich uploaded to DNC, okay? And if you look at that stuff for Mike video that just went up about an hour ago, Rabbit Mole confirms that. He said he felt that it was the files that Seth Rich wanted to leave. Oh, right, right. Everybody that we've talked to, we've had three, uh, and are we still gonna have our other data analysts from- Let me get Canada? that ready. You guys keep riffing and I'm gonna make sure- So we had a data in between times, and now we're just getting inundated with data analysts because a lot of people have, uh, we're blogging. I got one from San Diego, somebody else came, uh, Jason's gonna do one from Denver. Um, you. We're working in Massachusetts, I think, with a lot of people in Massachusetts. And a lot of people don't understand, even though they were blogging, they don't understand how, what happened, happened. We had some New York people with the- It's complicated. And, and they're, they, they don't understand, how did these voter rolls get changed? How did the voter rolls get suppressed for the Bernie voters? So what we're gonna to describe to you tonight is in detail, techn technically, exactly what their cross-check program was. Liz was trying to write the press release Liz, sorry, all of a sudden, because I was thinking of Liz Croken all of a sudden, but Trish was trying to write the press release and her face just hit, hit the keyboard. I gave her that much wine and then she's, but she, but she's a trooper, she's back. Um, so we, we, we've just been getting all these data analyst calls, so we're now inundated with analyst calls. We can't take any more, but we'll give you the information. Okay. So. The process, let me explain this process, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use Trish here as an example. And you're gonna be a voter in a district, okay? So it's gonna be Trish Negron, okay? N-E-G-R-O-N, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, now Trish voted for Obama in 2012, okay? I know from profiling, and I'll explain how they did the profiling later, we can do that later, but I know Trish is not, is gonna vote for Bernie by the things she's exhibited along the way, she's given money to Bernie or she's done something with Bernie, and she's not gonna vote for Hillary. She's gonna vote for Jill Stein if Bernie doesn't run. And I think that's exactly the situation. Mm -hmm. and, and when Bernie dropped out, uh, Trish decided to vote for Jill Stein. Well, you don't want Trish voting in Massachusetts, okay? So now I'm gonna explain how CrossCheck did that. You, now, I go create in a, a, an adjacent district, I create a Trisha Negron, fake name, Trisha Negron, okay? For all the people I don't want voting in Massachusetts that are like Trish, that are gonna end up voting for Jill Stein, I create this list. You almost fell right straight asleep. I did. Yeah, yeah your head went, well, <laughs> like George, this <laughs> description is gonna no, be I'm the end so of tired. me. Yeah, this is gonna be the end of me. I can't take it anymore, stop. So anyway, um, so I create this, these fake names, then I run a program called CrossCheck. And what it's supposed to do is when people are voter fraud, you know, when they've uh, uh, registered in 18 different areas and it's gonna cross check and it's gonna say, hey, this isn't a, a legal voter. So Seth Rich was out there going and getting this get out the vote, G go TV, get out the vote, go TV. So we're gonna be talking about the get out the vote spreadsheets in a second. But she, he's out there going and getting all the Trishes in Massachusetts, all these new voters that Bernie appealed to. And now I'm over here, I'm gonna play uh, the Hillary person, I'm gonna go negate all those with this list. So cross-check would do this cross-checking like this. Now, you know I'm not Trish. There's the real Trish. You, uh, you know, I'm not, you know, pretty and kind of fat guy. So, so I'm not Trish, okay? But my name on the voter roll is Trisha Negron. So it goes, eh, 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 all the lights spin, uh, flash, and so forth, and they go, uh, invalid voter, invalid voter. Both of them are swept from the voter rolls. Understand? Clear? That's called, that's going to be known as redistricting. It's going to also be known as cross checking. Like cross check, you know, in hockey, when you hit somebody in the teeth and knock all their teeth out, 
But then it's also going to have this kind of silent, nice name about, you know, we're just crossing our I's and checking our T's, and we're going to cross-check, okay? Or deduping, they're going to call it deduping. But when millions of, there's going to be about one and a half million votes in New York that are going to be wiped out, that Seth Rich was part of, getting out the vote. I talked to people in San Diego. You're going to find this now all over the place. All the people who did blogs and couldn't understand how it happened is going to happen. Uh, and let me know when your data analyst is coming on. So those will, so this is exactly how. Now, if you go in, what is the full? Uh, Stuff. For Mike. Okay, you're going to see a presentation, exactly what I just said. It's going to explain how this process is done. You are also going to see Defango, uh, uh, when I said just what I said to you, say that's exactly 100% right. You're going to hear that on a phone call, and then you're going to hear the exact technical description of how that happened in the longer video, where it's going to be Jason on one pane and Defango on the other pane. It's a Skype call that happened about 10 minutes. A Skype call, but you're going to see that more technical description for people who really want to know exactly how it happened, how what the mechanics were of this. It's a really interesting explanation. It's, it's really good. I'm so impressed. You are still awake <laughs> <laughs> after that. After that, uh, and she's had a tough. Uh, you started at what four, three a.m. on the train, or yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really uh, amazing how much you guys have done, um, and. So anyway, back to the story. Um, you, you're going to see those two videos. We're also going to have a data analyst calling in. That's Jason's story with this, uh, we're going to call her Macaw. Um, he liked that bird. I like the wise old owl in Winnie the Pooh. I like, you know, but anyway, that's my bird. But he, he chose the Macaw for this person, just a code name to protect her identity, because I release identities too much. And um, she's going to explain this from her perspective, her data analysis. She has also looked at the files and has said that you cannot be releasing personal information. She's a financial. Well, it's not only just releasing it, it's, it's not protected. It's, you, you have an absolute duty to protect the personal information of your clients or customers or whomever information you're um, capturing to protect it from being hacked, but there is absolutely nothing in place that does that. Right. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more tradecraft to explain, I think, what was happening here. But um, here's your spreadsheet. It's a door knocking list. It's a GOTV. It's a get out the vote thing. So I've got union guys going out there and getting out the vote by clicking, hit, knocking on the doors of likely union voters. Okay, to get the money. Now, you're also going to hear how the Hillary people, the SEIU folks more particularly, could look into the AFSME data and they could look into the IBEW data and find out who was a likely union voter. Now, I'm, I don't, I'm not saying that the SEIU people had also an AFSME shirt and a IBEW shirt. But I am saying that if you just had two additional t-shirts, or, or just two people, you, we have three people here, Jason could go knock on the IBEW doors on behalf of, of Hillary. I'm still getting the money. Trish can knock on the AFSCME doors, and I can knock on the SEIU doors, and it's all coming to me. AFSCME so this is going to answer a lot of questions about the AFSCME people saying, what the heck happened to my money? This is going to answer a lot of questions with the uh, uh, IBEW. For instance, if somebody's been an electrician for 40 years and they were a member of the I uh, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, and you knock on the door and you say, I'm from IBEW and I would like you to support Bernie Sanders. And the guy says, oh yeah, the union was great for me. I, I love the folks. It was, it was, it was a good career and now I'm retired, and well, can you give uh, $50? Yeah, sure, I'll give $50. So they hand this, do you want to describe it? They had a little... They have a point of sale machine, so you could just swipe a credit card, and people would think they'd be donating to Bernie, and it, the money would go to Hillary. And that's how it was done. I it was mean, complete, it's fraud. It's that, just... That's how it was done. So we just broke that here. 
and uh, we have proof with and, and now that we've broke the model now you're gonna see just a flood come in uh, now I don't know if you remember back a couple of stories ago I did say that it would be a PowerPoint like Snowden had the prism PowerPoint um, and I think we found it if you go into stuff for Mike stuff for Mike I'm deliberately not remembering so so you can say <laughs> something before you fall asleep uh, stuff for Mike and the file name Jason what's the I don't know the file name of the presentation is what was the what file was name again? of the presentation the, DNC, the stuff for Mike file with the of the presentation um, the PowerPoint presentation yeah. Well, if you look at the stuff for Mike video, I made sure to include each frame of the PowerPoint in the video. So if someone can't find the file, they could just go to the YouTube and freeze frame and get every frame of the PowerPoint. You went through every frame. What's the name of it? Uh, remember? It was something like how to steal an election even if you're an idiot. I don't remember exactly. But if you go to that video after the live stream, you can see the whole thing and the file name will be there. Let me see if I can get to that. Um, so you'll, you can watch the uh, first video, I think, with uh, Rabbit Mole. And get that, or or maybe it's the second video. I think the, the first, first the first video with Rabbit. It's Mole, already there. It's already there. It's already up there. It's already up there, and you'll see Jason actually open the file, and then again the stuff for Mike folder is where to go. Now, if you don't get the stuff for Mike from the Mega Download, uh, then you got then that's that's not the good stuff. Techjobs.pptx is the file. Techjobs. T I guess somebody just. Techjobs.pptx. So you're going to need the latest version of PowerPoint or a fairly current version of PowerPoint, and that's a standard PowerPoint file. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be spreadsheets too. Just um, so we now that the PowerPoint definition has been done, and we said that, and now we've identified the PowerPoint. It didn't take too long. I think it took about three or four hours after you got here. After we put from the time of putting, because we were afraid to put the the thumb drive in until uh, we knew the electronic version had uploaded because we thought, what if something happens to the to the thumb drive? Then we're out. So we wanted to wait for that to upload to uh, Defango and make sure. And then and we waited till Kim.com uploaded. Uh, Haley Evans, good one. Uh, Haley Evans. So. CTO for Obama. Uh, I think I saw a presentation about the get out the vote by Hanley Evans. Anyway, um, we then did the momentous put the uh, thumb, drive. thumb drive in there to see what it was, and it, it nothing happened, and nothing exploded or anything like that. But we did go, and one of the things Trish did not mention is this. Stuff for Mike. Stuff for Mike. I'm going to just <laughs> keep working. I'm still here. Yes. With you. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, stuff for Mike. And that was, it's always best when you get a big trove of information. This is a Julian Assange trove problem. What do I do with this 2.25 gig? Where do I go? You know, how do I search this? And then having somebody describe and annotate and, uh, the, and, and curate what is actually the file is trying to do is the is the crap is the shit that's what you want to understand actually what happened we have many people now coming in saying yes that's exactly what happened um and i probably should start reading comments um, it's verifiable, it's, certifiable or? it's verifiable it's verifiable somebody asked about like jared beck's um lawsuit and cliff arnebeck we actually did i hadn't tried cliff arnebeck um you mean the, the, I, like the columbus lawsuit Yes. The exit polling lawsuit? Um, actually, it's Bob Fitrakis. That's. Fitrakis, yeah. yeah. I said his name earlier. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and Jared, and we did try and get it to Jared and Elizabeth Beck, but um, they did not seem to want to have access to it right now. And I imagine they have good reasons for that, so I don't question it. And well, they I, didn't want to be the agents that received it because then that would be committing a crime to gather evidence for your own case. But now that we've put it out there in the public domain, it becomes a part of the public domain and then they can reference it now and download it for their lawsuit. Now, yeah, this is the Sean Lucas thing, right? You know, you got served. I mean, we just gave a whole bunch of data to support this lawsuit, both lawsuits actually, yeah. the Columbus yeah. lawsuit and the, and the Miami lawsuit. Now, um, there was a little bit of intimidation going on. Now, everyone, 
everyone might have forgotten that Jared Beck was called by Debbie Wasserman Schultz and threatened to stop the lawsuit, this lawsuit we're talking about, right? Two minutes? No, we're being told that uh, Project Athena is another key PowerPoint coming from the message of the Project Athena. Here. Project and that Athena. is right in the, in the uh, stuff for Mike so, Silver. We haven't even looked at that yet. Yeah, so what's going to happen now the rest of the night is people are going to be finding different things like crazy now that uh, uh, Trish, she called uh, Rabbit Mole and, and basically went this process that I said is like find out the good stuff because it's going to take forever with that much data and, and, and she talked to Rabbit Mole and got down to this stuff for Mike. What, what was, that, was that it? Yep, stuff, stuff, stuff for Mike. Mike. Okay. If I emphasize that enough, <laughs> stuff for Mike. And I don't know how many, can you say how many files are in stuff for Mike? Uh, the number of files in the stuff for Mike folder is, give me just a minute, uh, looks like 48. Well, there's some folders, so oh, sorry, right there, we've got. Yes, we are helping free uh, got, Joey uh, Asajj. 32 files and then uh, an additional 13 folders that have, uh, I haven't even looked yet. Okay, so. I'm going to take all the viewers back now, put your memory caps on, your Wayback Machine caps on. And last night we talked to a guy named William Crosslow. So I'm going to make the cross and then I'm going to bring it in low for William Crosslow. That's how you're going to remember William Crosslow because he's going to become important. Because what he, he was AFSCME, AFSCME, the other competing union. It's better who gets to the door first and, and, and knocks. And if the guy's an electrician, you're IBW. If the guy is AFSCME, the AFL-CIO, you know, you have four. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, he said last night that during this four-hour backup process, you could look at the other uh, 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 clients or the other candidates' databases, and they would pull down this get-out-the-vote spreadsheet. So we, we did this. We did the PowerPoint story, now we're doing the spreadsheet story. And, and it would tell you what doors to knock on. So you could do a, a I'm going to call it a GOTV spreadsheet. So get out the vote spreadsheet. And what was that folder? No. <laughs> anyway, the, 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 the G, <laughs> GOTV uh, spreadsheets. And those were the ways that you would send the door knockers out. I'll confirm with you. Did you skip doors that you knew? Oh yeah, and then and then each time we'd get when I was um, using NGP Van during the 2012 election, um, I realized there were many times where a lot of us were confused because the way it was printing out was different each time. There it wasn't consistent, so it it had certain information on some. Um, uh, campaigns that we would go out on and then it would be completely missing in others so be that was also peculiar because if you did you campaign on the behalf of a union or an, or some, a candidate a candidate so and and for an organization um, you say which organization? progressive Massachusetts okay progressive Massachusetts so um, if you're if you want to shard call is ready what's that call is ready the call is which call? The, oh, I'm gonna keep going with oh Defango. Doing. Okay, so we're gonna have um, Macaw, who I call Wise Al, but the Macaw, who she's a data analyst. Now here's I'm gonna just this is the intelligence background called what's known as another dimension file or an ad file or a uh, it can also be known as um, anyway it's a two password file. So the first password gets you into the computer and you see all the columns that like Trish was saying are not personally identifiable information. And so like the union that they were associated with and the number of years and who they voted for for 2008, who they voted for in 2012, you know, all that data would be there. But then you can type in a second password, and now this is spycraft stuff, where you can get uh, more columns basically, or if it's a spread, or if it's a, if it's a PowerPoint, you get more slides, the secret hidden slides or if it's a Word file, you get the extra pages in the appendix that you weren't supposed to have. So look for that because I think this file, and I'm not 100% sure, has that capability. 
where you add that second thing, and we're going to talk about these files end up with all the personal identifi uh, identifiable information in there. That's exactly what McCall is talking to us about. That's it's exactly what she's, away. and she's the one who's done the deep analysis. Again, this has nothing to do with politics, nothing. This is all about process and fairness. We all had our candidate, they lost, but we can't continue this into the 2020 and, and, you know, election cycle going forward. That's what this is about. You'll hear that over and over again from every person along the way in this. And what's that? No, never mind. Uh, <laughs> now I only have to turn to you and everybody's going to go, oh, <laughs> God. So, uh, so stuff for Mike, you, you got that. Yeah, One more thing. If you're using a file that doesn't contain that stuff from Mike folder, you, you've got the wrong file. Right. You've got the first password file. You don't have the hidden or, or what's known as the shadow password. Okay. Yeah, we're concerned that there seem to be multiple versions of this um, download out there. And so if the stuff from Mike folder is a good way to identify whether or not the one you've accessed is the right one. Yeah, and I'm sorry this is really broken down, but there, there are people who have spent a year trying to figure this out. And there are literally tens of thousands all over the United States. So this is the answer. And so we're just giving people the answer that they've been looking for. That's the key. So there's, okay, ready? There's one other thing. It's going to be a video that actually explains this, how to do this cross check, the, the hockey stick and the teeth. So okay, so this is going to be a phone call that was recorded earlier today with our new contact, McCall. So my background is tech. I've been in tech for 25 years, so it's kind of easy for me to lead through the projects they were undertaking and discern kind of what they were trying to achieve. Oh, um, found everybody. And based on kind of some of the other claims uh, that have been made around uh, kind of voter fraud, et cetera, and what the DNC faces right now, you can extrapolate a few things out of the information that was sent yesterday. Great. So it looks like around 2010, they were undertaking you know, not necessarily a nefarious effort to aggregate data sets that uh, all of the applications within the DNC would have access to. Right. Are, let me interrupt for one quick second. Are you familiar yeah. with NGT Van and how it works? They're hitting our YouTube stream. Everybody, so get over. Get, get, get over to Periscope. Was it the on what? The jump drive or the NGT uh, Van information? Yeah, the data was on a jump drive that was given to Trish by a source that I am not aware of. So. Okay. So it was pulled off of. So is NGT Van uh, a private? Is it privately held by the DNC data source, or Private. do they have it behind a firewall? Private, my question. I don't know about any of that. I, mean, we, I can that. ask this those questions, certainly. The, um, the NGT van expert that we're dealing with is William uh, Crodlow, and he worked mm -hmm. directly for the DNC with the NGT van system. So it's very possible okay. that he, he could answer a question like that, and that's exactly why I wanted to record this. So. I'll yeah. listen to it when we're done talking, and I'll make notes of who to ask what of what, you know what I mean? Yeah. So the top two of the things that I just sent you, I'll talk about. Defango just said something to stop the The third one, the sure. third one is to kind of for me, it's stop the, the framing point. smoking gun. I worked oh, with uh, oh, uh, essentially it's energy companies amazing. for many years in data protection, mm -hmm. and there are, uh, there are no fewer than, I think, five or six uh, expansive documents in here that contain uh, personal identifiable information about U.S. citizens. So if you, if you search the documents here and look at the spreadsheet, there's thousands and thousands of people's first names, last names, addresses, phone numbers, emails, mm -hmm. uh, even down to their credit card, last four wow. number. Wow. And yeah. that is illegal. <laughs> why? What do you mean? Just to have it? Just to you have it stored? You can't have that unprotected somewhere. That's why um, if energy companies uh, get in trouble doing things like energy efficiency programs and stuff like that, if they, if they even allow someone's last name to be attached to any other identifiable information about them, mm -hmm. they can get into huge, huge trouble. So for these documents to exist unprotected somewhere and somehow they have made it to a jump drive, is uh -huh. a huge mishandling of information. So, oh, but Hillary Clinton would never do that. Hillary Clinton would never ever do that. Right. And the fact that they would download that for any reason, and there's no reason for them to download that, that's just illegal. And you know, it's just a matter of time before that gets out there. Yeah. Well, and that's why we're trying to get this information out to the public. Yeah. 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 Yeah
So that's have you, one. Yeah, have you heard uh, of the what was described? There's a there's a recorded phone interview on the CrowdSource the Truth YouTube channel with William Croswell, where he talks about what he describes as a known flaw in the NGT van system, something to do with uh, permissions or security that during backup cycles, basically every user could see every other user's data. And it was, it was brought to the attention of NGT something like, you know, for, for over the course of six years, and nothing was ever done. Now, he doesn't classify, classify it as a deliberate exploit, but it certainly seems that way to me. So I don't know whether it's delivered or not. Uh, what, it, what this looks like to me uh, when I read a bunch of these docs, when I go through, uh, you know, kind of all of the proposals and memos and whatnot, is that it's like junior league playing at the, at the high level. There are not the types of security people participating in this that I would expect. Right. And if I'm, you know, if I'm an a right now, and I am, so I think that he wants to control the criminal, but mm -hmm. uh, if, if she has access to the types of data that they're allowing and the APIs that they're creating um, with nefarious intent, she can mm -hmm. certainly direct the Walton Brothers or whomever else um, to create application calls to some of these, uh, uh, you know, to these data sets that are, that are deliberate, uh, deli uh, deliberately intended to mislead or misguide or, mis you know, uh, do whatever, right? I mean, there's, there's a whole section on um, redistricting, um, which to me is uh, interesting in, in complement with the technology changes they were looking to make. So they were, in tandem, as I read it, doing two things. They were trying to redistrict uh, so that they could uh, gain advantage, and they were trying to compile a data set of voters um, that may or may not have had the appropriate identi identification to be voter. So if you're doing those two things simultaneously, it sounds to me, from a technology standpoint, that you're trying to uh, gain favor or gain position. Does that make what, sense? It, well, uh, explain to me, if you could, what exactly redistricting would mean. So I think they were trying to gain advantage in different sections of the country by redistricting and um, allowing uh, potential favor in those districts uh, for a preponderance of voters in certain segments. Um, so there's, that is a full complexity, and there are several uh, spreadsheets in here that we you, you really need, and this is where I'm hoping Wiki Lace will help. Um, yeah. And I, I, ping, I pinged last night and said, you guys analyze this data because there's there's tons of um, spreadsheet information in here about um, the districts themselves, actually the cities themselves. I, I'm in Colorado, so I happen to look at Colorado specifically. Um, and there were different weightings in particular areas, and they were calling out different territories. Now, how that how that benefits them is up to an analyst to kind of sit down and figure out. But right. when you kind of read the tea leaves and all of these different things, you're seeing them under state projects, which, you know, could have started out as, hey, we just want to do the right thing and, and gain the, the, the advantage that we can um, legally, right? right? And could have easily migrated into, well, let's just cut corners and do, you know, what we know we can because we have the data and the applications to do it. Right. Does that right. make sense? So yeah. I don't think they were, I, when I say junior league, I mean there were not the, the, the fox was watching the hen house here, right? right. had a bunch Absolutely. of technologists, a bunch of technologists, and that, by the way, the crowdstrike thing, uh, I could go off on that for a tangent, yeah. on a tangent for a while, because nobody in tech, nobody, and you notice how nobody was speaking up, would have read that report and said that, that's, a, that's a genuine report. It was such bullshit. And the fact that, that our, our government would take that uh, at face value and use that is just, it blows me away, right? And right, the fact that they right. that CrowdStrike actually was come out, was essentially what was a marketing document, right? So there was right. no real value behind it. There was no measurement behind it. They came out with a marketing piece and sold it as real and got away with it. So that's mm -hmm. unbelievable to me, right? And for me, you know, I came up in the 90s in technology. We didn't create tech for it to be um, a way to shut people up. We, cre we created it as a great equalizer, and for it to be misused like this, it's really pissing me off. But um, <laughs> so, so when, you, when you 
when you look at what they're undertaking, it looks like they operated with impunity, and the technologists equally operated with impunity um, to help them, uh, you know, achieve goals. So again, this is this is 2010 information, but you can assume that they only went forward from here. I would assume, right? right. So they were releasing APIs around voter identity. Uh, API is an application, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but those are application calls to data sets, so they allow you to access particular applications or data. Um, this stands for application programming interface, is that what an API yeah, is? Yeah, right. So an API is released in order for others, so another technologist or another application developer, to be able to access the functionality of an application or the data that's just behind it. So when you release an API, it immediately allows Folder information to be accessed and used and manipulated in whatever way you want. Um, there was a, there's also a series of uh, flow charts that exist in this data in this stuff too, and this is why you really need the WikiLeaks guys to analyze it. But it talks about did you identify this person? No, then do this, right? And then it comes down to like you know I don't know what a what a uh, what a, I forget what they call it, I gotta look it up, but it, it's not your social security number and it's not your driver's license, but it's some other identifier that the Obama administration declared was was a, a an identifier that qualifies you, <laughs> right? So, so I don't know what that ID. is, but last time external I said, have driver's licenses and social security numbers and nothing else, right? right. Um, it was called so, external ID. And they were funneling That's that, what, uh, so you see there's also um, a bunch of landing pages and it says something like, uh, uh, SCOTUS, or it says uh, the, the Supreme Court landing page. Essentially, if you were going to do research, I'm, if I'm a, an individual, I'm going to do something, and I end up on that landing page, you were automatically being funneled into a voter qualification place. So you could validate that you were a citizen and you could register to vote through this process that was this side process. Does that make sense? Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah. It was, it was so they basically enabling right. people to who they want to qualify to qualify. Right, right. So instead of, so, you know, I went down to our voter registration site, but, you know, gave them my driver's license to find me, and they, they said, great, you can vote. These guys were sending people to landing pages on the website and then funneling them back through to their um, system and qualifying them online. Right. Right. Without yeah. the required information. So those are a couple of, now that, that's what it looks like because somebody needs to go through and, and, and you know, ascertain that that's what happened. Okay, and you um, saw that I did upload it to Wikipedia, right? Yeah. yeah, I saw that, I saw that. So hopefully those guys are on it and can start looking at it. Great. So the three things as I called them out here are one, there were projects that were being undertaken by third party technologists with their, what it looks like looks to be very little oversight. I just let you draw some letters LinkedIn profile, right? So if I'm a, I'm a C-level executive in technology, and if I'm looking at him from a, you know, hiring standpoint, I mean, I wouldn't have hired him for more than a sysadmin position, right? This guy is pretty junior coming into huh. uh, a board in like 2005, 2007, with you know a smattering of months here and there as a consultant, um, and then he comes in to handle data and analytics. Which, why you know, why do you think well. they do that, though? I mean, don't they have unlimited money to hire whoever they want? Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's, uh, I don't think there's anything nefarious on that. I think that uh, it's not their core competency, right? They're just so that dumb. I think in, yeah, in many cases, they don't do the, they don't undertake the kind of scrutiny that we would undertake, right? To um, hire the individuals with the, the uh, capacity. Um, to support, you know, which is which is something that is much broader than they think it is, right? So this is data data mining, data analytics, data aggregation is not their core competency. They think things like I need a website where people right. can sign up, right? Okay, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> That's crazy. you know, lots of people with with potentially uh, lacking credentials can end up in situations that you know are are kind of uh, they're into NTD for is the way I would describe it. So right. I, I don't think there's anything nefarious on that, but what you would understand, what you would assume then, is that this guy doesn't have security background. He doesn't have data protection background. He doesn't know about right. CII data. That's um, evident from what so, you're describing, obviously. No, right? So, you know, the, the thing that's glaring for me out of the documents that were sent, and again, I haven't been able to go through all of them, and I would encourage you sure. to really go through it, and there's a bunch of analytics in there that needs to be scrutinized, is that right. um, there was 
data aggregation, voter information information that was being uh, aggregated uh, potentially um, without validation, right? It was being routed from landing pages that were designed to capture information about people for other reasons and then being rerouted to essentially um, capture them as uh, registered voters. That's what it looks like. There's so you mean, so you mean someone, someone could just go onto the web page, enter whatever information they want, and then they're taking that as, hey, this is valid information? So I go and I'm, I'm interested in finding about, out, out about you know, the new Supreme Court justice nominees. And I go to that website and, oh, by the way, there's a pop-up that says, if you click here and go here, you can validate yourself as a voter. So right. that, that, that allows the user to put whatever information they want. Right, well, there's no validation there, right? right. There's nobody there checking my ID or my right. background right. or anything right. else, right? right? So then they're capturing that information and calling it whatever it is. Now, that's what it looks like. Again, you need to have somebody go through and make sure that what I'm assuming it looks like is, is any, there's no other reason to do that, right? If you're undertaking uh, real scrutiny and your goal is to uh, capture real voters and their real identifying information, then you would not do this. You would not go to a marketing landing page and funnel them that way. You would do something else. So from my this? perspective, yeah. Does that allow them to create imaginary voters, or what are the implications of that? I don't know that it's ma imaginary, but they may not be legal. Not legal. Right? And uh -huh. at a very minimum, they aren't, they aren't validated. Right? So right. if I can go and register to vote without uh, Essentially, uh, maybe I'm you're not a citizen. Oh, maybe I'm right. not a citizen. Right, maybe right, I'm, right. Maybe I'm somebody else. Maybe right. I'm saying, you know, there, right. there has to be a scrutiny there and a rigor that says you are who you say you are, right? And that rigor is not processed to a marketing what, stage. What would that <laughs> kind of mechanism look like? How would someone do that properly? Well, I think it would be much more sophisticated. You'd have to go through. Um, uh, you know, essentially a, a firewall That's the PowerPoint. Uh, channel, and you have to be putting in personal identifiable information that, that, that is then protected. Uh, like your social uh, security uh, number or something yeah, like that? Yeah, and then it's verified when you go to vote, right? So one of the things that was being uh, asserted, and again, this is an assertion that we don't have, um, uh, you know, any proof of yet, was that separate to, uh, I believe it's a hero. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, That's why we're doing there, this. Uh, that, that, that there were two voter sites that people were being, being routed to two different places for voting, right? And that there was some uh, shenanigans around that in order to capture double voting. You could easily do that with these types of API calls and this type of information, right? Because this, this structure was set up, you could easily do that. Um, so I think somebody, and I'd love it, I'd love to see the hacker community come together for this kind of good, um, should follow the breakdowns. They're out there, you know, yeah, see, yeah. see how these things were set up, see where they were routing this information, check the database and see what's going on. The fact that what you just heard about the other day, that I don't remember his name, or he said other other um, people were using this information. Yes, yes. Yeah, that says to me 100%. Uh, that the, the structure was not set up in that database and the access rights were not limited in a way uh, that you would do if you're handling that kind of information. And that says to me that the kind of IT folks that should have been employed were not employed. Mm -hmm. uh, so I worked, for example, for large utilities. The amount of rigor that they go through to protect you from being identified with your account number or with your address is is oversight, I mean, it has a huge regulatory oversight, right? So that we can't, I can't go and say, you know, Jason lives at this street and he's engaged in these types of programs, right? And there are rules and regulations around that. They were right. handling very similar information with absolutely reckless abandon here. There's a, there's a spreadsheet in here and it's only one of them that's called Contribution Export 20090601, whatever. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I got here, David ranks his email, how much he donated, he's a neuropsychologist, his employer is this intermountain, intermountain, his phone number is this, he lives at this address, he's in North, you know, what the That's hell? That's really crazy, yeah. <laughs> right? What the hell? I thought it. Who am I? Right? Wow. Um, yeah. People should be very is, concerned about this. 
that's huge mishandling of, of information. And that would never, ever happen with with the real IT folks that we work with consistently. Right? And, and I think, the, and thing, the thing that's so interesting about this crowdsource analysis is now that piece of information that you just provided will hopefully yeah. lead to a lawyer who can give us some insight as to at what point that mishandling becomes criminally negligent. Yeah, so for me, that was the thing that jumped out right away as, whoa, that's, that's something you can take right now. Like, never mind everything else. Yeah. You don't handle private citizens' information like that, ever. Right, right, right. Ever. Right. I mean, there's huge regulatory oversight in almost every market that has personal data. Um, and for it to appear in a freaking Excel spreadsheet, unprotected, not even not even proper protected Excel. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Is, you know, they, there's huge regulations around exporting that information. Um, so that I would I would hammer on that right away. The rest of it, you're gonna have to right. you're gonna have to get so, some you know, people who are willing to follow the spread and see, you know, did they did they use what was accessible to them, right? So information about voters, um, registration information, and the API calls to that information and, and those applications. Did they use it nefariously? I don't know the answer to that question. Somebody would have to go through and really analyze that data um, right. to see well, if they yeah. did or they didn't. But, but what, what, what it's telling to me is that they had the tools at their disposal, right? They had the, they had the tools at their disposal. Once they had the data information, once the API was set up, they had the tools they needed to do it. Now, did the Alon brothers do it? I don't know. Right. Right. Well, I mean, Somebody gave them the keys to the kingdom. Right. <laughs> right. Right. They were handed yeah. the keys to the kingdom. Now it's up to us. You know, I have my own opinion on that. Right. right. I don't think that their uh, their moral fiber is uh, incredibly high. And well, every time certainly they get in the keys. Right. Any other thing they use them. Yeah, abuse it, right. We don't <laughs> members of Congress with their own data, so it wasn't accidental uh, you know, happenstances. These seem to be pretty deliberate actions very and uh, at the very least exploits of yeah. known flaws. You know what I'm saying? There were the flaws to me, this the very fact that this information is still and again, it's older information, but it doesn't matter. You know, we're not that far out. Um uh, the very fact that it was available, this, I would call it recklessly, um, is, is huge alarm bells should be going off all over the place. Right. Um, and the fact that, you know, Watson and Schultz is as uh, hot to get some of these technology, you know, these laptops back tells me there's, there's a, there's a very good trail. Right, there's yeah. stuff on there she doesn't want the police to look at, obviously. Well, the police would never know. This is this is why I get upset about this subject because, again, you know, we're the technologists of the '90s. A lot of us are conservative. Uh, you know, used to be actually New York Democrats. I'm from New York too, by the way. You know, and we watched them um, abuse what I think was we intended as an equalizer, right? The internet was intended to be yeah. an equalizer, mm -hmm. and. There are abuses now in this, what I would call the next generation of technologists who uh, apparently think that we created it to, for them to manipulate. Manipulate dialogue, man manipulate conversation, manipulate position. Okay, so some people were feeling that was a little too long. That was a phone call with uh, one of our crowdsourced data analysts. That was McCall. And uh, was the sound pretty good on there for everybody? Could everybody hear that? She was talking about, you know, huge data mishandling, potentially illegal mishandling of data, huge red flags. I think somebody found the video. So oh, one, great. Of, one of the one of the things I was mentioning before was I expected a PowerPoint. I expected the uh, MOTV spreadsheets to move the uh, the yeah. GOT. This is great. This is great. GOTV uh, spreadsheets, but there's also a video. That explains this, and peop some people have already found it in that. What what folder is that? Stuff for Mike. Stuff for Mike. That's Ma that, that Mike, he's got a lot of stuff. Who is Mike? Is who the next is question. Mike? Yeah, that's but, one of the questions we want to. Does answer. Mike know Eric Braverman? <laughs> who who knows? But <laughs> the reason why all this is important isn't because it's to save the Democratic Party and get Tulsi Gabbard in and all that. But the important thing here is that if the NGP data 
that's at the DNC on July the 7th somehow magically gets mega uploaded by Hillary or somebody like the Awan brothers, it gets mega uploaded to Clinton Foundation headquarters three or 18 days before they have a convention to pick a candidate, that those are footprints that are undeniable. And it's directly related to what Seth Rich was working on. It's directly related to the argument that Amy Dacey has with Seth Rich about get out the vote. It's a direct motive for someone in, in the Hillary camp to be wiping out the, all the efforts that Seth Rich is going for. So it establishes motive, it not only establishes motive, but it also establishes the footprints and the metadata. If it went from point A to point B in New York here, from Washington, somebody had to move that data here. So that data didn't get here by itself. Somebody moved that data from Washington to DC, and that is the smoking gun. And once that happens, once Seth Rich knows that happens, what ha who knows what happens, but it, it definitely uh, establishes motive. And we'll, yeah, the final, okay. Um, so Trisha's tired, we're probably gonna let her, uh, like, I don't crash. know. Crash. Crash, go to Okay, crash. so people, people are uploading some of the PowerPoint files, and that's great. Because that way, you know, if you found them, you know, that'll help other people now go into those specific files. Post the file names so everybody else can see the file names. But the video is going to, we should play the video because I think the video actually. Okay, has somebody got that video? What's yeah. the video? What's it called? Uh, there's only 32 files in, in what's the name of the Oh, yeah. Uh, I think it's called what? Stuff for Mike. Yeah, let me look for that here. Stuff. Oh, yeah, there it is. So which is the one we're looking for? I don't know. We're all finding out together. Well, um, it's, is it an MP4? What could be in there? Yeah, then? let's play it for the audience. Let's show them. No, I got too many MP4s here. We got to look in stuff for Mike. Uh, who knows what that file is? It's not an MP4. Are they so stupid that they're still using AVI? Oh, but my what? point. My point is, is if. On July 7th, all this mega upload goes up. We are up using there. AVI. Oh my God! If Hillary's, if if this stuff does get moved on the 7th, that means the Russians and the SBR report is correct. Jesus, AVI. Do we have the least sophisticated IT people? Okay, so there's a there's an AVI file in stuff for Mike, which is like. That's a cool format if it's 1986 or something like that. But there's the video file there. And uh, if you guys just search for, I think it's called output well, and dot AVI. Let me explain what you're seeing. Let me explain what you're seeing is they're running this uh, vote negation program and they're using the oldest possible video format. And there it was. <laughs> but, but it shows a heat map of how the, the cross-check program was being used, I believe. So there is this ADI. You, you can make your own determinations. We, we just showed it to you. you. You know what you're looking for now. I want to talk about that a little bit, though, because okay, for right. sure, AVI, you know, when you guys download uh, a video file or shoot a video on your iPhone, it's shooting in a format called MP4, which is a, a pretty modern MPEG format that makes very efficiently coded videos. AVI is an audio video interleave format that is literally from the late 1980s and pretty much went out in the 90s. So it, it goes right into what McCall was saying on the phone call that these people are just unqualified, unsophisticated, just don't know what they're doing. It's ridiculous. And and the way I, I, I never it, I never go to that conclusion. The way I, I figure found out it the was, reason why they go to the old files, I believe, is because there's all kinds maximum compatibility of of holes in it. There there's known oh, exploits. No. That's why those, that could be it too. Um, the Wan Brothers, and, and the, the cool thing about really old file formats... AVI format is nuts, people are saying. <laughs> is, well, I, I think everybody's agreeing with you that it's an old format. I'm just wondering if there's somehow the encoders... It shows that. ...or the codecs mm -hmm. have, or, or, you know, I don't know. The thing that I, that I, I mean, the reason I raised the point was not to just insult the dummies that are making these mistakes, but to help people have some ideas. When you're doing your own crowdsource investigation, you got to think a little bit outside the box. Because there's all these files, I don't know what I'm looking for. Someone says there's a video file, I typed in MP4, it's not there. MOV, that would be a Mac, pretty much specific format. And I was like, gee, what is the oldest 
stupidest file format that I would never use, AVI, boom, it popped right up. Hmm. Interesting, huh? Yeah, it is interesting. <laughs> Maybe that was so that... Tradecraft, boss. Well, the, the flip side is uh, that you put a file like that on there, uh, on somebody's computer, because there aren't any, uh, you know, file, folder, applications, finder applications, or folder applications, and it won't find it. And it's kind of hidden, but not hidden, I don't know. I mean, or, or it would stick out like a sore thumb in the folder, maybe. I just think they're dopes. I, I just, I, I, yeah, metadata. So anyway, the metadata is if the Russians are telling the truth and they warn, if, if, if there is this mega upload, that supports the Russians and the ambassador. So, so the SVR report said, we are seeing this massive upload of data from New York, from the DNC, from the DNC, this mega upload, we're seeing a mega upload up to here in New York. And they also say in that same communication, they send the two ambassadors over and they said, and they're gonna kill one of your staffers because we are intercepting this guy named Jala. And they name him, they say, and it's Seth Rich. So this, it goes to the, the SVR report. If the SVR report is true, and there was a mega upload, that means the SVR report is true, and it means the Russians warned the DNC that Seth Rich was about to be killed. And that's, the, that's why we're doing this. It's not because we want to save the Democratic Party or bring back democracy. I mean, a lot of people want those things too, which is great. But if the SEIU is hiring killers like Jala to go around and pick up MS-13 types to do these assassinations and murders, in addition to having all the data in Congress, all these senators that and congressmen are, that are hacked and blackmailing them, that's a bad combination. It's you know, crazy. That's a bad combination. That's all I'm saying. And, and we found, I've linked on the front end, the Awan brothers, all the way to Seth Rich. The Awan brothers in inter-America are gonna be working on systems that lead into NGP van, the precursor of NGP van, and Seth Rich is gonna end up working on the NGP van system. It's gonna link almost everybody. Just like the emails link everybody, Hillary's emails and humans emails, just like the Blackberries link everybody, NGP van is gonna link everybody. That's yeah. my that's my metadata thing. So we're getting some more requests for people for the uh, original zip file because there was some confusion as to where to get it. People are posting it. That's good. So if you have it, if you have if you've got the, uh, okay, so there's a PowerPoint file someone's talking about, I, I missed that. How about if we give Trisha a pillow? Just grab that <laughs> And just, just go ahead and put your, you know. My well, head down. No, yeah, no. just go ahead and put your head down. So just, just real quick, if you're an IT expert, if you're some sort of data uh, analysis expert, if you have experience with uh, NGP Van, uh, send an email to truth at crowdsourcethetruth.org and I will email you the file using MailDrop because we've had some problems with some of the links are being a little bit... Early, earlier I, I, I said Debbie Wasserman Schultz called this law firm. This, in, this information we've released today that Trish got us is going to be helpful in the lawsuit where the uh, prosecutor was killed. Um, but there, the, at that law firm, Debbie Wasserman Schultz calls and threatens them she uses a voice changer software. But what leaves her caller ID on. Now that is. That's what I'm talking She was busy uh, encoding all her AVI files while she was doing that. That, is, <laughs> that one's hard to believe. Because, I mean, if you, you put that together with the death of the prosecutor, and it's oh. pretty, I mean. Can we please just send her to prison? I know. I mean, normally you would start an investigation with people who had, of a murder, with people who had made threats, right? I mean, law enforcement out there. Like to the chief of police, you mean? Threatening? Well, you? I mean, threatening the law, threatening the victim, you know? So um, then the Don, uh, Don, Lowe, Don, Lowe, Don Lowe, the guy who's also had threats, uh, Elizabeth oh, Beck said. Yeah, that. I can't remember his Oh, he's a cross check expert. Yeah, the co counsel. The co counsel the is threatened. DNC as well. fraud lawsuit. So just to verify, I don't need people to email me. Ooh, the MangoDB. That's it. MangoDB is your big, big database, big data database. Oh, oh, really? I was looking for that last night. I said it's either going to be Cassandra. It's going to be, it's going to be Mango because they're going to go unstructured data. They're not going to use a traditional database. And the reason why? 
Include the social media data. Include the social media. Colin O'Brien. Now, did everybody get to see the live stream that we did just right after dinner? Mongo DB. Sorry, I, I have you mangoes. You said mango. I was thinking I know, it was mango. a whole other database. That mango. Would have been pretty interesting. Mongo. Well. Mongo. Mongo meaning big database. Mongo. Right. 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 So we got a call uh, at dinner, and if everybody saw that, George took a call right after dinner that is posted with uh, the, the data analysts coming out of the woodwork. And um, after the stream is over, if you haven't seen that, you should go there. John from California gave us a lot of good info, and he's just sent a follow-up email. So we'll take a look at this, and maybe tomorrow we'll have some more stuff from John. And if, and if you remember what William Cross Lowe said last night, um, he said they used the Apache, the Apache server, and I said, how could that be? It's a web server. See, we got Trev. Okay, DeFango's got Trish. the Mongo uh, DB. He sent it to me on Skype, so let me get that. Uh, they use, the system that's going to be used is going to be Apache Office. And I think Apache Office is kind of like Zoho Office or the other ones. It's going to be a free um, set of applications on... Uh, yeah, Wheeler didn't, uh, he, he didn't confirm today. Thank you for that question. We're just about, oh, I killed the vibe. Well, that's fine. You can turn it off. We uh, we're waiting. They all for wanted me to slide over, and but Trish, you know, she's, she's falling asleep. I don't know. Yeah. What, what do you guys think? She's that kind happening. of show. It Trish isn't really, is really, really. I mean, we we brought Trish in because of the uh, drive, and you know, she we, adds something to the yeah, show. Absolutely, it builds out the massage squad. Love Trish. So um, let's see, Mongo number five. That's good. I like that. That's funny. Uh, the plug. I just want to give a U.S. News Corp. with an S is her her company, and then she wrote the series of articles. It started kind of with me, an accidental journalist, and then added the last couple ones with Jason. She's, she, every Sunday she comes out with another version, and she's a great writer. Um, she interviewed me for about an hour, oh gosh, back in March, and I saw the piece come out and I thought, wow, who wrote that? I had, it was great. All right, so that's the, uh, the, the database, that's the PowerPoint there for the, the MongoDB or whatever it is. Apache Open Office or LibreOffice, uh, we are at the New York headquarters, yep, and uh, what do we got in here? Oh, look at this. The names. That's so somebody sent us Josh Hendler's um, phone number last night. Is that person on? I would like to get that phone number, get that phone number again. Oh, this is the case study they did for MongoDB. Okay. Yeah, it's all publicly available. So this will all be... Is Dr. Corsi on the stream right now? I did send it to him. Tim looks like he might have the phone number for Josh Hendler. Don't have it today. All right, well, what is Mongo? Mongo is an uh, unstructured database with, for what they call big data. And because these are footprints again, or metadata, in the old days you would you know, you have a driver's license and a marriage license and a death certificate, and there wouldn't be that much in your file at the county. Now, with yeah, your Facebook and, you know, uh, your, all your AVI system. files that you're going to want to keep track of. Right, exactly. Plus yeah. your phone calls and text and so forth. There's been this explosion of data. So if you store the data in an unstructured way... Well, we got an email address for Josh Hendler. Well, is uh, he still at the DNC? You can get... Um, it's much more scalable. You can get many... You can have millions of people that you can collect their social data. That's what MongoDB does uh, best, hence the name MongoDB. Right. But I, hey, is there a way to save the live chat comments? Because they get so much good information in there, but it's almost impossible to, uh, to see it all. I do agree. Dr. Corsi is very likely in bed. He's an extremely sensible man, and it's late. <laughs> well, this is going to get picked up probably. Uh, oh, everybody mentioned this Aaron Wasserman, who is the VP for oh, there's his private cell. I like that. Thank NGP you. Man. Is Blackberry? That's hilarious. He's gonna tell us to go take a flying. Well, it's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what he says. We're Everybody's mentioned that. Bev Harris. We're just shouting that back out to you. Maybe we just move that and let Liz. I mean, Liz. I keep it because I think of Liz. Uh, yeah. Croken, but I mean, let Trish. You know, kind of close her eyes. <laughs> That's, are you going to come back in the scene? Oh, yeah, I'll try and hold on for a little longer. I think okay. everyone will be happier if you... Well, I mean, listen, I think that we don't need to really carry on the stream for that much longer. The big information for tonight was there's been some uh, disinfo. Thank you, we got those Josh Handler phone numbers. Great, we've got it, I've recorded them. So 
the big info tonight was there's been a little disinfo regarding our uh, Trish Magic thumb drive from the Rabbit Mole. And we've finally got that sort of out of the way. We know where to get the good file from. We know uh, what we're looking for there. Uh, if anybody knows who this guy Mike is, that would be interesting to know. If stuff for Mike, if any of those files land on the uh, Clinton server on, Ju on July 7th, we know that the Russians were telling the truth and we know the Russians warned about the murder of Seth Rich. And we know Jala is the killer. So, it, so how does that confirm that Jala is the killer? There's no way that you are allowed to take the DNC info before a candidate is declared and then move it to your campaign. There's no way. And if there's this big mega upload, which is the Russians say this, there's this big mega upload. That's the data traffic spike that we... That's the, the data. If there is the mega upload, from now on I won't say DC to New York, I'll just say if there is the mega upload. Mega upload. That's the trip, that's the metadata. That means the rest of the FSVR report the Russians did is true. Hmm. And that means they warned them, they warned the DNC uh, that Seth Rich was going to be killed. And that means also, because the Russians were monitoring traffic from Jala, they weren't monitoring Seth Rich's traffic. They were oh, monitoring Jala's traffic. Right. That means Jala's the killer. And the other person that Jala is talking to at the DNC, which is going to be SEIU, is the other person who ordered the murder. So this is another case where metadata solves everything. <laughs> George, you're incredible. Right? Well, it's just one, two, three. I mean, what other news show is is doing it like this. You could watch, you know, shows where they spend 20 minutes talking to you about garbage, like, what's her name again? Oh yeah, Rachel Maddow, or Jake Tapper, or any of those. It's minute 21, she's at page news one. news shows. You're getting the real news right here. And you know why? Because we're crowdsourcing the truth. You're crowdsourcing the truth. That's An a good name, you should get that Unbelievable access to just vast knowledge and I mean we would never be able to do it all by ourselves and see what what's great about exposing it everybody says oh no you're telling me what e evidence to destroy when they destroy evidence they do wacky things they do things like call in the uh, Capitol Police Chief and threaten their budget on film it's crazy and then they th tell them there's gonna be consequences or they do things like call up the law firm that's doing the lawsuit and with a voice change yeah, and the <laughs> caller ID on these and are the caller crazy ID. things that Debbie Washington Schultz always <laughs> does it really <laughs> is hard <laughs> to believe and then when I saw it, well, I went down to the, the chief administrator's office you know and I, I asked do you keep records of hire dates of people and the fire dates of people you know that's basics right public record and they're like <gasps> Don't ask me any questions. And then she has the unmitigated chutzpah to call in the three guys and line them up, <coughs> like Hillary lined up the diplomats when she was taking over the State Department. Again, proving that that these these are the guys that were forced to give the Iwan brothers top secret clearance in some of the top committees in the House. So it's it's really it's really quite amazing. I think you even rattled her with the ambush. I agree. I, I think agree. you rattled her with the ambush, and she was all of a sudden started making wacky moves. And I don't know what's going on. It just and Comey as well. Comey proved half the other half of the case. He proved the Wiener to or human uh, Anthony Wiener desktop sinking. So what's left? I mean, give leave a little something. Yeah, if people are commenting about the caller ID. I mean, it's so hilarious. I could see Debbie Wasserman Schultz going shopping in the spy store and forgetting to turn off the caller ID. I mean, now that we've unmasked exactly how it was, <laughs> how it was done, all the people who have all, these, all this data are going to go, ah, oh, did, 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 did. And so that, right. yeah. And the, so the lawsuits now are going are gonna to succeed, both of them. You know, I think this is a significant enough stream that people should be tweeting this at POTUS, tweeting this at the real Donald Trump. Doesn't matter if you like Donald Trump, dislike Donald Trump, he's the president. And this is a direct assault on the democracy. And also Pe Seth Rich's parents. I mean Seth Rich's parents should they, know. They about have this. a right to ask for discovery of the mega upload. And what does the US government have in terms of me mega upload? They have a right to ask for they do. We Anybody do. who has been murdered or threatened by SEIU has a right to see the mega upload. So I'm in there. I'm a, we're all plaintiffs. Let's see. 
Mike Conlon. Why are people saying Mike Conlon worked there for two years? Is that Mike? Step for Mike? Mike, Mike Conlon. Oh, who Trish. Who, Mike who said she was sleeping? She got it. <laughs> That's Mike. That's oh, great. Man. That's great. Oh, that was like when you got well, blues let's see. bar and grill. Right. Mike. Mike Conlon. Conlon. How do I spell Conlon? C O N O L. That's Mike. Mike Conlo. Conlo. Let's see what he's up to. Mike this Conlo on so Twitter. Why don't Direct we tweet this oh, that's good. right at him? How's that sound? Oh shit, we just outed the guy who got the drive though. Did we? Yeah. Stuff for Mike. Remember when I asked Fish who it was for? But uh, he didn't get us the drive. I know, but he was getting this stuff for Mike. Hmm. So Mike is the recipient, so uh, listen, Mike. Uh huh. Well, we don't know who who named the folder stuff for Mike. Well, that's Rabbit Mole named the folder, right? No, I don't think he. Did. I don't think so. No. 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 no he, he got just it. Just downloaded for, it. Yeah, he didn't name that folder. No. Oh, okay. No. He's he in lives. Brooklyn. Hey, Mike Conlo. Um, come on over, or yeah. we'll go over there tomorrow. We'll come over yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. So can I? Yeah, let's tweet to him and just be like, thought you. Oh, it could might. be Mike Ratner. Wow. Oh, yeah. Let's not send it to Mike Conlo. Wow, that is pretty good. Mike Ratner. Ratner's dead. Michael Ratner. But that makes a lot more sense. And particularly but, if the person who made that folder is Eric Braverman. Oh, right. Because so, he's getting ready to leak it. Anyway. Yes, Mike, this look at this stuff. stuff. Hey, does anybody know how All to... the good how stuff. To, the metadata on how to look to see who created the file? You can't tell who created the folder. You can't? No, I don't think so. You know, if it is Michael Ratner, that makes a lot of sense. Because then... Either Seth Rich, would Seth Rich be communicating with Michael Ratner? Sure, he was in New York. So I have or a Eric Braverman I have a, something to tell you about Spycraft, and I think I have to say it now. Um, the way you, I, I've told everybody I was in a blind network, a thumb drive network for Der Spiegel, and then that kind of morphed into the RT and um, uh, WikiLeaks network. Well, the way a spy agency defeats that, the way like um, like a McCabe would defeat that. Mm -hmm is called a notifier. I thought it was called bullets. Well, you gotta know who to shoot first. Mm. The, there is actually, uh, I don't wanna scare people, so anyway. And it, this may be not the smart thing to say because now it's gonna scare people for you using thumb drives. But the, the, the number one, safe, it used to be the safest way to do the thumb drive because you know you don't give away your IP address and your router and everything. And geo Mike Blake, people are saying. Well. You put in a file, I think it was saying this added dimension file. You put in the file a notifier. Now it's a silent notifier. So every time you access the file, it sends out a ping basically saying, Here I am. It geolocates you and it says who is looking at that file. So if Seth Rich gave out a thousand thumb drives, okay, at the at, in, in Las Vegas. All, everyone with the thumb drive would put in their computer just like we did tonight and it also secretly loads the notifier. So now you go chinka 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 chinka, oh I'm part of the Seth Rich network. Now it sends an FBI a notifier saying, hey, Jason, you know, crowdsource the news, Goodman has right. it. We have to get all, wherever that goes, we have to get the whole downline. We have to get everyone. So and that's Mike, how you break a blind relay. That's how you break a blind relay. Michael Blake is is not the chairman of the DNC. He was running for vice chairman of the Beacon DNC. Beacon is another term. But Beacon is more of a pulse like this. Like every five minutes, it'll send out. But a notifier is different in the sense that it wakes up every time a person opens a file. Uh, and that's different. That's an event-based thing rather than a Beacon. I think of more as a uh, pulse. Now, why do we think it's Michael Conlo? Yeah, the vice chair. I, I think Spider it makes much more sense that stuff for Mike sounds like a folder. Like if you were going through the whole directory structure and you knew the goods were all this stuff, just looked at LinkedIn. Josh was Mike's boss. Yeah, but why would that be there? It, see, if it's coming from Seth Rich or Eric Braverman and going to Michael Ratner, I'm not going to contact uh, Trish. Uh, no. Check your DM. Somebody has the name. Conlo is in WikiLeaks. Yes, it's true. But let's let's just theorize for a minute. Okay. 
Okay. If you're Eric Braverman or you're Seth Rich and you say, okay, we have this whole entire thing and I know that these are the juiciest, meatiest files that are definitely problems. Right. This is the I'm going to put them in there so that when Mike Ratner gets it, I'll say, hey. Mike I Conlow created some of the Word documents. So go ahead. You, yeah, but that's, that's he works Ratner. for the DNC, so who cares? That doesn't, why, he, why does he need stuff? If he created them, well, I'm just, he wouldn't put them in. Stuff for Mike is created by someone else for Mike. If you're Seth Rich, so you're here was here's what I was trying to say with the notifier. Let's say I made a hundred copies, and everybody knew about the thumb drive network, and everybody gave them to Mike Ratner. Okay, let's say five different people are all going to come to New York and give them to Mike Ratner. When Mike Ratner opens the files, it's Mike Conlo. It's going to send a message to Andrew Doc McCabe. X files. His name is the author. When Mike's uh, server mirrors it across the pond to Jim John Jones's server. And then John Jones opens it, it's going to send a message to Andrew McCabe. When Gavin McFadden does the same thing on his server, it's going to send a message to Andrew McCabe. So, and, you know, John Nash, you may want to throw John Nash in there. And there, be a, there may be a whole bunch of people that are dead now that we don't know got opened that file. Open okay, this file don't, don't read the name of the sender, but look at that email. That's interesting. I don't think we should read that just yet. So this is great, guys. This is exactly... I want to tell a little story while George is, is reading that email. See, I started Crowdsource the Truth in October because I was just really kind of disgusted with the amount of fake news that people were uh, posting and spreading around. Check the folder creator. I don't know if you can check that on the Mac. Mike Flynn. I don't think it would go to Mike Flynn. The so, most, the thing that makes the most sense is that Seth Rich or Eric Braverman were in touch with Michael Ratner, and they aggregated a bunch of files and stuck them in a folder called Things for Mike, Stuff for Mike, so that when they send it to Ratner, they'll say, the most important files are in the Stuff for Mike folder. If I'm Mike Conlow typing Word documents and making stupid PowerPoints about how to hack the election and encoding AVI files, why would I put in a... I don't put stuff, my own stuff, in folders called Stuff for Jason. Yeah, see, Cody but knows what I'm talking it's, about. It's intended for someone it's else. It's intended for someone else. So Mike Conlow, I would eliminate based on that. Yeah, he's the author of the Word docs, but he's not storing them. When I, when I write Word docs, you check and say, oh, Jason Goodman is the author, but you'll find that they're stored in a folder called Documents or Word Documents because I know I'm Jason and the files I create are for me. I do believe... That stuff for Mike is a folder created by either Seth Rich or Eric Braverman. So here's what we're doing, guys. The reason I created Crowdsource the Truth was because I was getting so annoyed with people posting fake news and stupid Rachel Maddow clips. And I just want to say the reason why I dislike Rachel Maddow so much is because she's got to be the worst purveyor of fake news. That that 30 minute uh, you know hangout of pure nonsense to reveal. Uh, a tax document that just showed nothing. You want to talk about a nothing burger? That is a nothing burger with, it's like an Atkins nothing burger with no bun. What we got right here is an extra cheese, double anything but nothing burger I with had too many extra bacon, cheeses. tomatoes, no. lettuce, mushrooms, yeah, probably too much extra pickles. Cheese. This is the burger. This is the Hillary locker up. Debbie Wasserman Schultz Burger Deluxe. This is the pork With shop. fries, you get a free Coke, all that, okay? So I started Crowdsource the Truth because I wanted people to be thinking more critically. Now look, a folder called Stuff for Mike, that's not evidence that these are the Seth okay, Rich did, files. Did you read this? That's why I gave it to you. Uh, I was elected to lead. Oh, oh yeah, you read. No, no, that's good because. <laughs> that's President this Schwarzenegger. Was, this person says... Don't tell my name, right? No, this person says this person has evidence. This Right, they're afraid to have by themselves. So I found it sensitive and I wanted you to do your analysis of it before I got too into it. It seemed yeah. important. So that's somebody who has information that they're scared to be the only one having. And that's why we're doing this live stream. I want people to verify this because I don't know if it's true. But I do believe that last night I became the first public leaker for WikiLeaks. We put this document on WikiLeaks and, you know, uh, let's get some lawyers weighing in if I put myself into any legal jeopardy by doing that. Um, George is telling me I have it. 
sometimes George tells oh, me things. No, I'm not, that, I'm not a legal expert. expert. Turn out to be but not that's Mike Blake. That is, and I don't think he has really anything to do. Mike Conlow, okay, he wrote the documents. We get it. But what we're trying to do is we, we form a sensible narrative, not Russia hacked and then spend 12 months trying to find evidence that that happened. Seth Rich was murdered, okay? The cops tell us it's a robbery, but yet no one stole anything. And we say, well, why don't we examine the photographic evidence so we can learn more and see uh, if he was murdered in a robbery. And they say, well, you can't look at the photographic evidence. And it's like, okay, that's so strange. Let, let's. I mean, that was, the email I read was pretty uh, uh, amazing. It basically said this person knows everything and... Um, We're going to communicate with that person for sure. And I think it's okay to say the first name. No, I don't like it when you do that. We're going to protect the source. We're going to contact you once the stream is done and we well, will say, reveal look, the, the first name begins with a C. Why? Why? Because then everyone will go, that eliminates... 25 other letters of the alphabet. But why do you want to do that? Because I want that person to come forward and know. They that. just did. There's the. No, no, no. The, 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 the lady came forth and said. Oh, yes. that other person. And no. she referred and said, that's the guy who knows. Oh, the oh, oh, oh. Well, okay. I don't want to believe her. Okay. Reveal okay. her. Okay, so I, want I got her. a game, and you tell me what you think of this game. Right. On every live stream we do every day, yeah. we will reveal another letter of this person's name until they come forward. Because if you are aware of criminal wrongdoing that jeopardizes the democracy of the United States, and Connor Shaw, according to Defango, no. I'm gonna just say, this is too important. This is important. If you this are is, aware of this wrongdoing this is too and you remain silent, you're complicit, and you'd better I'm come say forward I'm gonna take we'll responsibility for this. This first name is Chris. Chris, now's the time to get in front of this. Okay, we're taking risks and it's time for, it's yes, Defango, you're right, it's too important. All right, so let's get Chris out Larry of the dark, Clayman tomorrow. We'll talk into to Larry, the light. Clare, Larry Clayman tomorrow. Blumenthal, first of all, he spells Sydney with an S. Second of all, he's not coming forward, he's the one playing. Well, his name's Sydney. not Chris either. No, his first name is Sid, uh, Sydney. Chris, out with it, exactly. The comments want to know who Chris is. I think this has been our best live stream yet. Well, Just in terms of the revelation. I mean, we're getting so much closer. I mean, two days ago, I sat here on this couch and said, "Whoever, whenever we get the mega data upload, we'll have the killer of Seth Rich." Is we'll Kim on our Periscope tonight? Do we see Kim there? Chris Hemsworth. No, I don't think so. He's too busy making Thor movies. Well, anyway, just to finish the story. I saw all this nonsense getting pushed out. Yes, we know Mike Cernovich is an attorney, but what's the but difference? Did you see that? Defango has a direct line to Chris. Call him up. Defango, call him up and tell let's, him to do the right call thing. Him, let's call him and just ask him right now. Yeah, Defango, do a little bit of uh, recon there for us and, and call no, him up. No, I mean you, not Chris Rock. Hmm? Not Chris Rock. Um, Chris Rock. Why don't you call Defango right now and just ask him? Can you tell me who the who the deep throat is? Well, I don't know. I mean, then Defango might be part of the. Uh, uh, no, the, you right. can just all right, tell all right. Defango. Hey, Defango, we're gonna call you right now. Defango, Oops, no, no, wait, hang on. Let me just turn off. We got the stream going in the background. I'll turn that off, Defango. If I'm connected to you, hang on one second. Because if he answers and says the last. Yeah, name, I wasn't saying that. I know. I said I had a direct line to you guys. It's oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so it's not Chris necessarily. Do you know who Chris is? I, I, I think I don't know if it's Chris or not. I don't know who you guys sent over, but you know, I was okay. just looking into that. It sounds like. I mean, if you guys already outed his name, you better, you know, you better uh, get in front of this one, buddy, before they start. Do you know who you. Chris Pratt is? Do you know who Chris Pratt is? Chris? Yeah, Chris Pratt's the guy from. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Exactly. Uh, People are trolling us with oh, the Chris okay. name. So if you don't know who it is, just don't make silly comments. The point, and, and let me finish this. I started Crowdsource the Truth. Defango, thanks, man. We're going to let you off the line there. Defango's Thank been you. helping us so much with the Crowdsource investigation. We've got white hat hackers. We've got data not analysts. Chris Christie. We want not Chris Christie. No, he's busy eating donuts and jamming up the Lincoln Tunnel. Crisscross, uh, yeah. yeah. It's crisscross is like a Hitchcock thing. Hated the fake news, wanted to encourage people to do some critical thinking, to dig deeper, to look for facts. Don't just accept that talking about Seth Rich's murder makes you a conspiracy theorist. It does, in fact, seem like there was a conspiracy to kill the man. And he's an American hero. And that's part of the reason why we're doing this. So my idea was to do exactly what we're doing right now. 
But until I connected with George, because George generated so much enthusiasm and such a such a really excellent following with his incredible Ooh. investigative. I'm just I'm, I want to get the killer. Chris Griffin. Is that a famous person that's a troll or? Well, I don't know. Let's just leave it at this. If you really do know who Chris was, you can send it to us and we won't reveal your identity, but we will start trolling Chris with tweets and uh, I don't we'll think Chris Matthews. send him these live streams and if it's not, check the email. Let's check it. Well, I guess you could do a compound search on DNC and NGP Chris. Van and the word Chris. Yes, we could. That would get you the answer. Oh, Chris Griffin is from family. Diagrams file. Oh. Well, it could be Chris Cuomo. There's that a network sense. model that looks remarkably familiar to your brother's network model. You're talking about the Awan brothers' network model. Chris Cosworth worked at DNC in Atlanta. I heard about a big voter fraud thing in Atlanta. Diagrams file within stuff for Mike. Let's look at that. Chris Cosworth. Hmm. I see a diagrams folder. Hmm. But these are giraffe files. I don't know that I have anything that can open a giraffe file. I'm on a Mac here. I do have Windows Chris with Wolf, the mathematician works for the gate Saunders. Well, I mean, you know, this looks like we've got someone here who has some info. It's a graphol file. Who knows what application can open a graphol file? Giraffe? Does it say giraffe? G-R-A-F-F-L-E. Graffle. Mm. Yeah. Chris Ingram. Yeah. D's nuts. That's not helpful. Well, anyway, I don't know. What do we think? I think to wrap it up. I think so. But we're seeing crowdsource the truth at work here because, you know, when I joined up with George, he had all these people out there who just tons of information. They were doing all this research. And now that we've been doing the live streaming every night, Chris Croker, somebody says. I don't know. It's probably not right. Croker but, is, that's a wink. That's a... Yeah. We just, we just put out this information last night, and there is a flood of analysis coming <coughs> in. We've now, we've sent this stream over to Dr. Corsi. We've sent the uh, Seth, the hashtag Seth Rich files over to Dr. Corsi. He's certainly going to be analyzing that. We've got a lot of good people. Josh authorized, what was that about Josh Hendler authorized stuff for Mike? If anybody knows how to save the comments file. Corsi's on Twitter right now. Is he? Yeah. Dr. Corsi, are you on the Twitter feed? Corsi awake. Um, somebody just said, yeah, we, we, we had it set up backwards today. Normally we have the... Uh, the, I can't even see the comments on Periscope. We'll, we'll do, of course he knows Trump, we know that. So does Cerno, and we were on his show today. Can I just get a, a yes or why type of one if you saw If you saw the um, InfoWars segment we were on. Oh yeah, let's get a thumbs up from everybody who saw George and I on Mike Cernovich or on InfoWars. If you don't want to give us a thumbs There's a up. Y. Yes, 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 yes. Looks like a lot of people saw it. Great. So you remember the set. Very familiar, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, this is where Trump is in, comes into play because he, he, he Cernovich is close to Trump. And uh, so that's good because... Okay, wait a minute. So we got... Uh, Defango sending us images. Oh, it looks like he's got the file open. The get the, the the. Okay, let's see. Who's better than this guy? Okay, so that looks like the. The graphol file, huh? Yeah, there was these flow charts that they did for people. This is how crowdsource the truth works. I don't even know what a graphol file is, and Defango has well, it open so before I can even Google it. So what this flowchart says, this is for the door knocker to follow this flowchart. In, in, in uh, Vietnam, they used to have these flowcharts that were plastic coated. 
and, and they were called uh, for the second lieutenants, you know, uh, you know, like if they saw rice, more rice in the town that, uh, than the people living there, or they saw them in sacks, you know, they would say, okay, you need to burn the town and kill at least three people and then hit it with a napalm, you know, and literally it was on the flow chart. That's crazy. Yeah, and that's... So this is nothing to someone that would make a plan like that. Yeah, it's like right out of Stratfor. I mean, just like uh, Rand Corporation. Rand Corporation did the flow charts. Bob McNamara is the guy who... So now we've got a lot of... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post these files on the Crowdsource the Truth Facebook page for people who maybe are not as sophisticated as Defango and can't necessarily open some of these more exotic but, file formats. But the point here to marry up these flow charts with the um, earlier guest that said there's all these personal information. I don't know if you heard her say, here's the doctor, here's the company he works for, um, which was Intermountain Health, I think. Um, here's the uh, like income level, you know, here's the last four digits of his credit card number, so you can do that. That's great. Um, Chris Murphy, Chris Hayes, Chris Hayes is an interesting one. This would have been person Chris Lee's, these people would have been like a, a, a hacker. This person. Hate FB, seems like Periscope users don't like Facebook, that's fine. Van Holland. We're just trying to get the information out in as many ways as possible. Somebody just told me to look for a comment. Wait a minute, let's go back here. There's only gonna be, I mean, if somebody downloads the DNC phone book, right? I mean, how many employees did the DNC have, 300? There could only be. Tady, Tady asks if we seven should contact or eight Josh. Chris's. Yeah, we should contact Josh. So you can be able to. Yeah. Listen, anybody who worked for the DNC that has knowledge of this, we want to encourage them to call in. Chris Porter. Tomorrow we're going to have it set up so that people can call in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a crowdsource the truth Skype, uh, you know, handle, and people will be able to. Um, people will be able to just call in to the show here and like we had with Trish yesterday, we'll have them up on, well, or if they want to be anonymous, we don't have to do that. But if you know someone at the DNC who you think knows more about this, now is the time to tell them to come forward, get, a, get in front of this, and you know, we'll do everything we can. I need to clear up something I saw on the thing. So I, when I say the mega upload last year in 2016 from the Clinton, uh, DNC to the Clinton Foundation. I'm not talking about the old mega upload that Kim.com is talking about. When his house got raided January 20th, 2012. Hang on, somebody wants a text here. They shut down mega upload, okay? So we know that. I'm just using, because Kim.com has inserted himself into this drama, I'm just using Kim.com's name to describe this mega upload of NGP van. I could call it Hillary's NGP voter database moving van, you know? It, it, it has nothing to do with mega upload and Kim.com. Yeah. Okay, so we got somebody who wants a text right here. Other than the fact that Kim.com is somehow inserting stuff in this. Now, from what I just, thank you for what you just said, I know that Seth Rich, uh, uh, Kim.com was on this thing last night and I started getting into a fight with him. Um, he said that Seth Rich had a account, a mega upload account. Well, he may have, but he certainly didn't upload the DNC and WikiLeaks because Mega Upload was shut down January 20th, 2012. Okay. The API. You know what I'm saying there? Yeah, sorry. His, his whole story about Seth Rich had a Mega Upload account. Well, that had to be before January 20th, 2012. That, that, I am beginning to think that that's not as important as any of the stuff. No, I'm just trying to here. discount uh, Kim.com's story. I'm trying to say his story doesn't hold water. Well, the thing I want to know from Kim.com is how the hell did that 500 gigabyte thing that everybody says doesn't have the files in it get there? Well, if he... Let's listen to this for a second. Okay. Someone is saying the API and the voting software, I will vote, vote builder, etc., is how they change, drop, add votes. And that seems to... Uh, sort of corroborate what McCall was talking about and also what uh, Defango and I were talking about earlier tonight. John Corsi's on Coast to Coast Radio right now. What's he talking about on there? I don't know. Is that live or is that something that he's recorded? I emailed Dr. Corsi this stream, so uh, maybe he's watching it and reporting that. Uh, it looks like we got some more stuff coming from Defango here. No, it's going to be a hacker type of guy. It's going to be a uh, what do you call it kind of guy, um, defango kind of guy. Oh, Kim.com called us jokers? Well, 
He called us jokers? Yeah. Right? When he just, did he do that? Yeah, he just called us jokers. Well, how did Seth Rich... Is he on there Kim, now? Kim.com. Here's my question again. Why did he call us jokers? Well, I'm just... because... Like, listen to me for one second. How would Seth Rich upload and use Mega Upload to get you the WikiLeaks file? Why did he call Listen us... to me. Sorry. This is important. You, how would me, Seth Rich, you, you're the one who put out uh, that Seth Rich had a mega upload account last night. How would Seth Rich upload the DNC emails on January the, uh, July the 7th to you when your service was shut down on July, January 20th, 2012? You said yourself last night on here on this show, that's when you were shut down. How? Are you going to say you he's, had a No, seat? he's not there. I don't think he's on No, there. last night he was, and he said Jokers tonight. I'm just asking Who, the question. When did he say we're Jokers? Somebody I said that. But uh, I, mean, I don't know if they know what they're talking about. Look, forget about Kim.com. These files are way more... Yeah, Kim, DeFango says Kim's not on there. doesn't matter. What we're talking about right now is this bit of information that we just had. Where did that go? Okay. So the API... Where did that go? You get so many messages coming in here, it becomes difficult to even keep track of them. So, what you're trying to say is Mega Upload was after he got shut down? Yeah, I, I agree with Defango. That was a troll who said that. Okay. I'm not so interested in that. Okay, fine. Yeah, two different companies. Oh, right. you're chatting with Defango. Yes, yes, yes. No, that, that's fine. Forget that's about Kim.com right now. I am onto something. Because Which Chris Wurzernick or something just went up there. Could, could you repost that and, and do W and then big space, all caps, and then E, and then and I think it was a G. Could you rewrite that real big letters in all caps with the... Here, wait a second. Okay, so inside the White House folder. Okay, here's what we got. This is what we got. Right, so Defango was talking about this. Somebody else was talking about this. No, this is not... Uh, so I would love to do Stefan Melanie's show. Melania. Yeah, I don't think we need files from, from Mega Upload. All right, you know what? I am feeling really tired. It's almost 1 o'clock in the morning. We've been staying up hugely late every night. Chris Chan, de Deputy Chief of Staff. Oh, W-E-G-R-N-Z. I don't know. All right. Well, listen, everybody. I think we are really getting somewhere. When you consider that uh, Seth Rich was murdered almost one year ago, and the cops have found See, that's nothing. a Russian name that... Ginger, W E G, and I, 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 I'm telling you Huge right now, Wednesday. he's going to be one of. I, this is it. He's going to be one of the, uh, the crowd strike guys. The crowd strike guys came from McAfee. They're all the Russian guys we hired. We brought them over from from Moscow. Uh -huh. They wrote viruses, and then we wrote the antiviruses. I didn't know that this was going on. I was selling uh, network. Uh, protocol analyzers, so I was... I mean, we almost need a day just to go through all these messages. There's but, but, but the thing is, focus on the ones that are on the right track. That's the key. And, and that's going to be the Russian name. That's going to be the Russian connection to CrowdStrike. Can we just do a quick search on WEG? May as well solve it tonight, and then everybody can go to bed. And, and yeah, might as well solve the whole entire conspiracy tonight. Well, but what, do saying, want, what do you want to search for? What do you want to search for? Chris, W-E-G, N-R... Z. That's a name? R Z Y N. R Z Y N. W E G Y Z R N. That guy needs to buy a vowel. I know it's going by. Can we put it in slow mode because we're just going by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can only do 14 things know, at the I'm same sorry. time here, so. Oh, um, there it is, the I chart. R Z Y N. W E G R Z Y N. W E G. I see it. It's right here. Chris? And then say DNC. Wedrins. Say DNC. Okay. And then say CrowdStrike. I'll bet you that's where he works right now. CrowdStrike's going to be the landing pad for all the DNC people that did get a job. Well, and they've got to fake it, say Russia has an election. The, the other thing everybody should keep in mind is that one of the classic, you know, George always talks about metadata, right? And when you hear other mystery shows or people trying to solve uh, some unknown, you know. Then we have a story here. Security folder exception text references site explaining critical vulnerability. Security folder. Oh, we have, listen, all right, the comments are really hard to file. 
follow. Because they go by so fast. They go by so fast. If you know about specific files and specific folders. I know what folders, the security is now. Thanks for the, the someone's calling you. The three the three hints. All right. The, the last security thing. folder is they got told about the, 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 the vulnerability in like 2008. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, listen. We should keep these co buffering black screen. We know. It's like. Oh, this is Chris. Hello. Hey. Oh, now we're not going to leave. Okay, hold on. This person has a solution. Who are you? It's, uh, you know me as WikiLeaks Lover. WikiLeaks Lover. Oh, WikiLeaks Lover. One of the best contributors. Yeah, go for it. Okay, all you have to do is upload the entire file to Pirate Bay and everyone can download it there. Okay. Oh, Pirate Bay. Just Pirate Bay, any torrent site, but Pirate Bay is the most well known, so I would go that route. Isn't Pirate Bay so that then the CIA can steal it and they use crowdsourcing to steal stuff and then come out with you, a I, I, no, come out with a hedge fund? Stuff on there. I'm just saying, if you want to get it out on a mass scale, you you don't have to worry about the file size, and you can just upload it as a as a file on there, and then everyone can grab it. And if you don't want to use Pirate Bay, there's all kinds of other sites you can do that on well, outside of Mega. Upload. Well, somebody out there. Yeah, can do there's that. a lot of people who have the file now. I mean, here's the thing: if people have the full 1.11 gigabyte file, somebody please upload it to Pirate Bay. We're, we're doing everything we can to just even answer the message. Mega fire. I mean, the question tonight is: Is Chris Wagrens R Z Y N the deep throat to this Watergate too. I know I can slow down the chat, but we're using a phone, so it doesn't work that way. I'm slowing down the chat over here. There's all kinds of things. Okay. If you have... I, I have a solution to the chat issue too. If you make someone else an admin in there, then they can control it and slow the chat down. But we know you, that. Like, we know that. I appreciate yeah. the input, and we've done that, but it introduces other problems. All, well, all I'm saying no, is... You need to, you've, you've moderated people. You need to add an admin. If you give someone admin privileges, then... They in the comments. If you want to tell me I'm short, put that in the comments. If you've got credible evidence, just, you know, email it, and we will definitely look at it. For right now, we're going to go to sleep. We super appreciate everybody participating. Super appreciate the 665 people on YouTube Live that stuck around until 1 a.m. To see really this historic broadcast historic moment in history, historic investigation by Mr. George Webb. It's pretty great. Thanks, everybody. Happy Friday. Good night. Thanks, everybody. And Trish is sleeping. Trish so. the Dish is sleeping. Yeah.